Hello, my name is Jack Dulles, Director of Training at Tulsa Welding School in Jacksonville, Florida. And today, we're going to talk about how to restart your 7018 in all positions. You know, so let's just go through this. I've started a, a bead here. And for whatever reason, you got you came to a stop. Maybe maybe your wife called you and told you you had to come in. Maybe the boss man told you to stop. You have to go to a meeting. Maybe the power just went out while you were welding. There's so many variables of what why you know why you got to make a tie-in. But I can tell you this: if you're going to be welding, you're going to have to learn to make a tie-in. And so today we're going to walk you through this process of how to make a tie-in. We'll start in the flat position, then we'll move to the vertical, and we'll do the overhead. So we've got a bead here. And I've got a little markup over here that we'll get to in just a second. But you can see the bead here. We've got a nice bead. And this is where we stopped. And this is where we're going to have to make a tie in to, right here. Okay? And it's probably the easiest one to learn is called a J technique. And what is a J technique? Well, just like it talks about, I'm actually going to draw a J with my welding rod. So what will happen is I'll fire up ahead. I'll come back, you always strike up ahead, okay? Why do you always strike up ahead? It's because every time you strike a 7018, every single time you strike a 7018, right where you strike it, there's gonna be porosity there. Why? It's because the flux hasn't had a chance to shield it, and there's gonna be a little oxygen that gets in there, and so there will be a little porosity right there when you strike a rod. So you always strike ahead, and then we're gonna come back, and we're literally gonna draw a J on here, and then we're gonna continue on. So let's move over to my little drawing, and I'll show it to you multiple times. So here we've got a drawing, we'll start. This is my bead, just like you have over here. So what we'll do is once again, I'll strike up ahead. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna draw me a J technique right in there and then I'm gonna continue on. But there's a couple things you need to watch out for. Okay, so let's do it on this one. That was the right one. Let's say you strike up ahead and then you come in and you cut it off too short. Okay, then there's going to be a gap in between your tie-in, and you'll notice it. And I'll show you one. I'll kind of go through the do's and don'ts, if you will. And then there's another one, <clears throat> kind of the don'ts. You strike up ahead, and you go back too far and draw a J. And then you're going to have a big old knot on top of your weld. So these are the things you want to try to avoid. You want to make sure that you go back and you loop this right inside the circle. And then you draw a J, and it will come out with a very nice tie-in every time. Like I said, if you go in, you cut it too short, it's going to leave a gap in between. You go in, you go too far behind it, and it's going to leave a big old mound on top of it. So, yes, it's going to take a little time and practice, but with a little time and practice, you can get it right. Same thing happens in the vertical, but we'll get to the vertical in a minute. So let's go through, let's make a couple of tie-ins here. I'll show you the right ways, and then I'll show you the wrong ways, okay? We're going to make a J technique tie-in right here on this spot. Everybody ready? Let's make a tie-in. Here we go. All right, let's stop. Let's do this again. I want to be able to show it to you again. I want you to be able to see it another time. Let's knock the slag off of here, get that out of the way. As you can see, there's just a little mound there, but it's a nice clean tie-in. Everything looks good. Let's do it one more time. Let's do the right tie-in. Then I'll show you the wrong tie-ins, if you will. Strike up ahead. Come back, make your tie-in. That's how you make a nice clean tie-in. I'm gonna go through and show you what not to do. You can see that's a nice clean tie-in. Everything's fused in very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and run one on here and then I'm gonna show you the poor tie-in, some of the things you don't wanna do. So let's get a bead on here and then I'll show you a poor tie-in. Here we go. Okay, so we got a little bead on there. Let's clean the slag of it off. All right, so what I'm gonna show you here is actually I'm gonna cut it short, 
okay? I'm not going to make that J tie-in right on my circle. I'm actually going to cut it short, and you're going to see the gap in between, and that's not a good tie-in. So follow along here, and I'll show you a poor tie-in. This is something that you don't want to do, okay? It takes time and practice. It doesn't happen overnight, but here we go. Okay, let's stop. And you're gonna see here where I didn't come back and loop it onto the bead like I showed you on my diagrams and showed you before. You're actually gonna see where I cut it short, I didn't go back up onto my bead, and now there's a gap in between and I didn't make a successful tie-in. And if you can see right here, there's clearly a gap in between where I did not make a clean tie-in. And these are the types of things you wanna to try to avoid because you know, there's, that's gonna be underfill in there, there could be uh, processing, there could be several different things going on. So you really need to watch out for that. Now I'm gonna show you another one where I actually go back too far over the top of the bead and it creates a big mound. Okay, stop there and you're gonna see here now, right in this area where there's now a big old mound because I went too far back over the top of my tie-in. And you can see how it's mound up right here. I've went back over it too far back over the top and it's created a big old mound on top of it. And you know, it causes it to where you can't quite see what's going on because you've went back over your weld too much. So these are the types of things you really gotta watch out for. Like I say, it really just takes time and practice uh, and you can make some nice clean tie-ins. So like I say, work on the J technique. It's probably the easiest technique to learn. Like I say, it's literally just drawing a J. You're coming down, whether it be in vertical, horizontal, whatever position, and the vertical will strike up, we'll come down, we'll draw a J, and then we'll go right back up. Same thing horizontal, we'll come back, we'll make our tie-in, draw a J sideways, and continue on. Doesn't matter what position you're in, this is by far the easiest tie-in to learn, J technique and this is done in the flat position. Now I'm gonna show you in the vertical position. Let's refer back over to my diagram. And in my diagram, you're gonna see I've got a couple of them drawn here in the vertical position. Same thing like I just showed you. You're gonna strike up ahead, okay, we fire it up. Since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna come down on the right side of it and loop it into me because that way I can see where I'm tying it in. You don't want to draw a J and loop it away from you because it's going to be, you're pushing the puddle away and it's hard to see where exactly where the tie-in is. So draw the J back at you, whether you're right-handed, you know, if you're left-handed, it's vice versa. But right-handed, you're going to draw it and come back. If you can see here, I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm going to loop it in, draw a little J there, and then continue back on up. But the key to this is striking up ahead and watching that spot where you loop it and draw on that J. Like I say, let's show you the wrong one strike up ahead and you come down and loop it too soon, then you're gonna have a gap in between. And then like, like I've showed you before, if you come down and you go too far over the top, then you're gonna have a big old mound here and this isn't good. So uh, these are some of the things you gotta watch out for while you're making tie-ins. So I'm gonna set this up in the vertical position and show you a couple of those. Okay, so I went ahead and tacked one up in the vertical position. I went ahead and ran a little vertical bead here just so where I could show you how to make a tie-in. So once again, we're gonna strike up ahead, come down, draw a J technique, draw on the J into me. So I'm gonna strike up here, come down, loop it right here, and then go right back on up again, okay? Get down here where you can see it, get out of the way. All right, we're gonna draw a J technique, make a nice clean tie-in. Everybody ready? Let's stop there. Let's do this again. I just want to show it to you another time. Got a nice clean tie-in. Let's do this one more time. J 
just where you can see it again. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of the don'ts. Uh, let's clean these all up. Show you these tie-ins. Make nice, clean tie-ins. Yes, I know the bead's a little crooked. I'm not worried about the bead being crooked. I'm trying to show you the tie-ins. But as you can see, nice, clean tie-ins in there. Everything's fused in well. Uh, so let's show you some of the don'ts. I'm going to get a couple of rods here, and I'm going to get a bead up on here, and I'm going to show you what not to do again. I'm going to show you how to leave when you cut it short, and when you go down too far. So let me get a bead up on here real fast and then I'll show you the don'ts. Here we go. Oh, we were welling along, we lost our power, something happened. Oh man, we got to make a tie-in. So we got a nice little bead there. So once again, I'm going to show you the don'ts, okay? I'm, this first one is going to be actually coming down and cutting it too short. And then the next one will be actually coming down too long. So, too short. Here we go. Okay, let's stop. And can you see that in there? Can you see how we left it, how I didn't even make the tie in there? That's because that's you cut it too short. I didn't come down and draw my J on the loop like I was supposed to. I actually came down and cut it too short. And you can see, I didn't even make the tie in at all. There's a gap in between there completely, and that's not good. All right, this next one I'll do up here. This will actually be coming down too far on top of it. Here we go. Oh, sometimes that happens too. And can you see how big the mound is? Look at that. Look at that mound. I can't even get my file to go up over the top of it because it's bulging out over the top. And what that was, how that happened is because I went down too far. I came down over my well too much. And now I've built up this great big old puddle here. And you can see I've got a great big old knot on top of it. That's not what you want, okay? Especially if you have to run multiple, pa multiple passes here. You're going to end up with mounds and knots and stuff that are not good. So try to avoid these things. Like I said, it does take time, does take practice. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. Uh, but with a little time and practice, you can do this. Uh, like I say, same thing applies for the overhead. It doesn't matter what position you're in. Literally, the J technique is probably the easiest one to learn. So practice it on your spare time. Go in, work on making some tie-ins in all positions, and you can do this. I uh, really appreciate you watching the video, and thank you, and have a great day. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something today. And if you want to stay up to date and get tips and tricks to become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, click on our video. Thank you and we'll see you next time.